So you're thinking of wearing support stockings because you're concerned about varicose veins? Brother, you've got a lot of problems, but believe me, that is not one of them. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the disaster doctor of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 500 posts on medical preparedness in times of trouble. Along with the lovely nurse Amy, I'm the author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, second edition, a book that will help you deal with medical issues when you know what hits the fan. This is America's favorite noisemaker, T.D. Bird, at least when he's not on my shoulder, and this guy deserves no introduction at all. Today I'm going to talk about collapsed veins in a collapse. These are called varicose veins as well. Varicose veins are similar to, but not the same, as spider veins. Spider veins form in tiny vessels called capillaries that exist everywhere in your body. When they become varicose, they appear like little red or blue spider webs. You may find them on your legs, face, or gosh, just about anywhere. People with fair complexions seem to get a lot more of them. Classically, varicose veins are larger, blue, swollen, and stick out from the skin. They tend to look twisted or contorted, and varicosities cause the circulation to become less efficient. This causes pain and fatigue in the legs and could lead to inflammation or blood clots. You're more likely to get varicose veins if you are 50 years of age or older, the valves in your veins weaken as you age. If you have a family history, if your mom had varicose veins, you're probably going to get them as well. If you're a woman, high levels of estrogen as seen during puberty, pregnancy, and while taking birth control pills increase your risk. If you are obese, extra weight puts pressure on the veins and causes them to dilate. Work in a profession that requires long periods of standing, lifting weights, or sitting with your legs bent. If you spend long hours in the sun, especially if your complexion is fair, you might notice them first on your cheeks or nose. There are various complications from varicose veins, and we're going to talk about some of them. Besides discomfort and an unpleasing cosmetic appearance, varicose veins are usually not dangerous, but you might see some of these issues. Thrombophlebitis. A varicose vein on the surface of the skin can become inflamed. This is due to a blood clot which formed due to the poor circulation in the area. Symptoms of thrombophlebitis include painful swelling, warmth to the touch, redness sometimes along the line of the vein, tender hard nodules in the area, itching sometimes, and fever. Basic treatment involves moist warm compresses and anti-inflammatory medication for discomfort and fever. Elevation of the affected extremity may also be useful. Elastic support hose is helpful when you're performing activities of daily living. Although most cases of thrombophlebitis are not due to infection, antibiotics are occasionally needed. Cephalexin, Keflex or Fishflex, is known to have activity against Staphylococcus, which is the most common bacterial complication of thrombophlebitis. As an aside, hemorrhoids are varicose veins in the anal region that can also become inflamed to have their own type of superficial thrombophlebitis. Deep vein thrombosis is another complication you might see with varicose veins. It's a blood clot that forms in a deep vein. The patient will experience a full or firm feeling, usually in the calf areas where it starts. This is going to be accompanied by pain, heat, swelling, and redness as you might see in superficial thrombophlebitis. While many people may present with no symptoms at all, a deep vein thrombosis can be dangerous if the blood clot dislodges it makes its way to the lungs or other vital organs. Indeed, shortness of breath may be the only symptom you notice. In this circumstance, a blood clot may already have made it into the lung. We call this a pulmonary embolism, and it's possibly life-threatening. Other signs and symptoms would include breathlessness, chest pain, a fast heart rate, and or bloody phlegm. In addition to compresses and pain relief, patients with deep vein thrombosis may require blood thinners. Salicin from the underbark of willows, poplars, and aspen is a natural alternative in survival situations when the pharmaceuticals have run out. The amount given using this method, however, always will be a little bit uncertain because each tree may have variable amounts of salicin. Don't attempt this treatment on someone who's already on blood thinners, such as Coumadin. 
If your patient has varicose veins, have them stock up on compression stockings or support pantyhose while times are good. These will be unavailable in a collapse setting and neither will be curative treatments like surgery, lasers, or chemical injections. If the resources are there to eliminate this issue in normal times, consider doing so. In any case, encourage your patients at risk to exercise their legs to improve tone. This will improve support to the blood vessels. Avoid standing for long periods of time. Shift your weight from foot to foot often and take a short walk if you sit around all day. Keep their weight down to avoid putting strain on their legs. Elevate their legs above the level of the heart for about a half hour daily or maybe during sleep. Wear support stockings as we mentioned. Don't cross through your legs. Sitting with your legs crossed can slow circulation to and from your lower legs. Avoid wearing high heels for long periods. I doubt you'll be wearing high heels after a disaster, but that's good advice. Eat a low salt diet. Less salt consumption can help with the swelling that you see with varicose veins. And wear sunscreen to limit spider veins, especially in people with fair complexions. The herbal remedy most quoted to treat varicose veins is the horse chestnut. Horse chestnuts contain a substance called aicin, which appears to block enzymes that damage capillary walls. Make a tincture, a grain alcohol based mixture, with the herb and take one tablespoon of it maybe up to three times a day. For external use only, you can rub a mixture of four parts witch hazel with one part tincture of horse chestnut and rub it on the affected varicosities. Hopefully you'll never see a deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism in times of trouble. However, you will see varicose veins. Knowing how to deal with them will improve your group members' comfort and functionality. This is Joe Alden, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.